Welcome. Let's take a look at verifying trigonometric identities. Um, you're welcome to take a look through this and pause it. Um, there's one of the challenges with identities is there's so many, and it seems like a whole lot, but, but there's a lot of different identities we use to prove that that one side of the equal sign is, is equal to the other. And first thing we need to be aware of is that this is more of a supposition. This isn't really a statement that these things are equal. This is, hey, are these things equal? So it's not an equation, so we don't get to use property of equality, such as what might be tempting, multiply both sides by tangent squared. That's a property of equality that says, if this equals that, then this times something equals that times the same thing. We're trying to prove this is equal. We don't know, in theory, we don't know if they're equal yet. So. With that in mind, they talk about over here, you're going to work with one side of the equation. I can't, I just say if, if the left side's an island, the right side's an island, nobody gets to leave this island, nobody gets to leave this island. I can't subtract cosine squared on both sides. So I can only just work to simplify this or complicate that, but nothing crosses. Um, that's important. Another thing that I'm really picky about, we're not going to take cosine squared and expand it this way. This equals this equals this equals this equals this. Always going to be in columns. The left side stays on the left. The right side stays on the right. And then we can use our trigonometric identities to try to simplify things. And of those, we've got dozens of options. And that's one of the things that becomes a problem for people is what we would refer to as paralysis of analysis. We're going to sit around and think what's the perfect thing to do first. You'll start to get good at this after you get a lot of practice, and believe me, you're about to get a lot of practice on these. Um, but but that, that's wisdom. Right now, we're just going to try some ideas. Now, there are very, very few 100% of the time rules, but here is one of them. If I have an identity and I have three different or three or more different trig functions represented, such as here, I only have two. But if I have three or more sine, tangent, and cosine in this case, I will 100% of the time turn everything into sines and cosines. So this left side would become sine squared of t. I'm going to go big division bar here over tangent squared is sine squared of t on cosine squared of t. And there we've created a mess. And I'm going to refer to compound fractions as a mess. And we want to immediately try to clean up the mess that we create. And I can do that because this divided by a fraction is the same as this times the, the, the divisor fraction times this guy's reciprocal. Cosine squared of t on sine squared of t. And that is sines cancel. I get cosine squared of t equals cosine squared of t. That's what we wanted to be equal. And we are out of this one. Um, so pretty straightforward there because I'm, I'm talking. going to go back and talk about that 100% rule. Sine, tangent, cosine. Or if I have cosecant, secant, tangent. Doesn't matter if I have three different trig functions or more, everything's going to become two different trig functions. It's easier to work with two trig functions. Uh, sine and cosine work well together with, with their Pythagorean relationship, so we choose those. Easier to work with two than it is to work with three. Okay, now in this case, I've got cotangents and cosecants and cosecants. And I've seen some people that just always. Uh, reflexively just put everything in sines and cosines and we get comfortable then. You're, sometimes that's a good idea, but often you're just adding work. In this case, you'd be adding work. Um, assigning, sines and cosines go together well because of this identity right here. However, cotangents and cosecants are just as good as sines and cosines because they live together in a Pythagorean relationship. So I like having those two trig functions together. What could be better than having two different trig functions would be to just have one trig function. And because we have squareds here, Pythagoreans are in play. So I could either turn cosecant squared into 1 plus cotangent squared here 
and cosecant squared into 1 plus cotangent squared there, or I could turn cotangent squared, if I algebraically manipulate this, cotangent squared is cosecant squared minus 1. Cosecant squared beta minus 1. This becomes that, plus another cosecant squared beta. If we can get everything confined into just one trig function, then it's tr truthfully just algebra, where this is just an ugly variable. So what do I have here? I have a cosecant squared b and another cosecant squared b. An apple plus an apple is two apples. And a minus 1, that equals 2 cosecant squared beta minus 1, and we're done. Okay, so pretty straightforward on those. Uh, trust me, these are going to become more challenging, as you might expect. Um, you really got it down. You, you really know you got it when they, when they start just feeling like puzzles rather than math. Okay, so here we've got sines and cosines already. And as I just stated before, what could be better? Let me back up just a moment there. Might be tempted to say subtract 3 on both sides, but that means 3 is leaving the island. So we, we can't do that. That's a proper property of equality. So nobody from here comes over there, or vice versa. Okay, so I got sines and cosines. What would be better than sines and cosines? Well, just sines or just cosines. These are squared. They live together in a Pythagorean. And that Pythagorean is right here. So I have an option here either to turn sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared or turn cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. I'm going to turn this 3 plus sine squared into, remove the cosine squared with subtraction, 1 minus cosine squared of z. That's 4 minus cosine squared of z equals 4 minus cosine squared of z. So that's a very, very quick problem. I'd like to warn on this. Let's say we had worked on the right side. So we're redoing this, and I work on the right side. And I go 4 minus, and in place of cosine squared, I decide to use, I decide to use 1 minus sine squared. I will see people do this. They'll go in place of that cosine squared. I've got minus cosine squared. I get minus cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared of z. And therein, we just made we just made a mistake. Because it's minus all of cosine, it would be minus all of 1 minus sine squared. And that would give us our plus. OK, so just careful. Um, just another common common error made. Now, tangent squared, cosecant squared, they do not live together in a Pythagorean. Tangent lives with secant. And cosecant likewise lives with cotangent. But Pythagoreans are most definitely in play here. In fact, tangent squared could be turned into secant squared minus 1 or secant squared cosecant squared, excuse me, could be turned into 1 plus cotangent squared. But even better yet, cosecant squared minus 1, this is just cotangent squared. Oh, I've got tangent squared of y times plain old cotangent squared of y equals 1. And these are reciprocals, so we're going to show that. 1 on tangent squared of y equals 1, 1 equals 1. Now, one of the things we'll talk about, we already know the answer. We know this is going to equal 1. I'm interested in the steps. If you ever need to ask, if you ever ask yourself, I wonder if I should do this in two steps or one, we're going to err on two steps. This is about how we get there. The reader shouldn't have to divine how you got there. For instance, Let's say we see, oh yeah, this is cotangent squared. I can write it as 1 on tangent squared if we jump from here to here. Now the reader has to go through the process you, you, we just went through, turning this into, into cotangent squared and that into this. From here to here, there, we don't have a direct link, but we definitely have a direct link from here to here with an identity. Any algebraic manipulation of this is fine for a step, and we use that. And we definitely have a step from here to here. 
And algebraically, we clearly know this times this is this. So baby steps on these. If this was a simplify problem, and you went from here to here, and then you said that's one, I'd, I'd know that you got it. But when, it, when the answer's already given, we're not going to just poof magically come up with one equals one. Okay, let's take a look. Holy smokes, we got a low, load of problem here. Um, verify the identity algebraically. So I got cosecants, and I got sines, and I got cosines, and sines, and cotangents, and cosecants again. Um, this is pretty ugly right now. Is there a payoff for distributing this before we do anything, before I go to sines and cosines? Well, cosecant squared, there's a payoff there because it brings Pythagoreans into play. And cosecant times sine, they're reciprocals. So this is cosecant squared x minus cosecant times sine 1 plus, pretty sneaky here, sine minus cosine on sine could be sine on sine minus cosine on sine. Sine of x on sine of x, we certainly see a payoff for that, minus cosine of x on sine of x, plus cotangent of x equals. Well, what good's happened here? Well, let's see. This is cosecant squared of x minus 1 plus 1 minus cosine of x on sine of x plus cotangent of x. If I go to sines and cosines with it, see, let me tell you what my thinking is right here. Why didn't I change this into 1 on sine squared? Well, I kept my eye on my target, and I kind of like this cosecant squared. So I kept it, but now I see these 1s cancel each other. I have a, this is a 1. They cancel. I've got a minus cosine on sine. They're gone. I wish I could get rid of this cosine on sine. Oh, well, cotangent is cosine on sine. So cancels, cancels, and I just get cosecant squared x equals cosecant squared x. Oh, that was really ugly at the start. Um, my temptation might have been to turn everything into sines into cosines right away, and I thought we would down the road, but let's we're just kind of thinking ahead a step. Cosecant times cosecant, that's good. Not only does it bring Pythagoreans into play, it matches my factor. That's one of my favorite strategies. We're going to talk about that a lot. Match a factor on the other side, so that matches, although it's not a factor here yet. Um, splitting these is kind of sneaky, but anyway, um, that one kind of that one kind of fell apart. Um, didn't didn't become as bad as it looked like it might be. Okay, cosecants and secants and cotangents and cosines. Um, we could do the same thing here and make this one on secant plus cosecant on secant. I still got different trig functions. I think I'm going to go to sines and, ooh, that was terrible. You, you didn't have that in view. I'm, I apologize. So cosecant, secants, cotangents, cosines, as I was mentioning. We could make this one on secant. That would be a cosine. We could make this C plus secant, cosecant on secant, and maybe that would work into a trig function. I think I'm going to go to sines and cosines, as I was just saying. So this is 1 plus 1 on sine of theta all on 1 on cosine of theta minus cosine of theta on sine of theta equals cosine of theta. So everything in terms of sines and cosines. Now, this is what I would refer to as creating a mess. And we're going to clean that mess as soon as we create it. In this case, I just have a single term to divide by, single factor term in the bottom to divide by. So I'm going to make this 1 plus 1 on sine of theta times the reciprocal of that, cosine of theta on 1 minus cosine of theta on sine of theta. 
And let's see, I guess I have to distribute here cosine of theta minus cosine of theta sine of theta. That's plus. Plus cosine of theta sine of theta minus cosine of theta sine of theta. Oh, there's a match for us. Equals cosine of theta. These cancel. Okay. All right. One thing we have to just keep in mind: just try something. Try something. Sine cosecant sine cosine. Let's go sines and cosines. Cosecant is one on sine. Ooh, there's a payoff for us. This is one minus sine squared of theta equals cosine squared of theta. And that has Pythagorean written all over it. Can we algebraically manipulate and get one minus sine squared? We sure can. This side is cosine squared of theta equals cosine squared of theta. Okay, here's a strategy I might use on this one. Um, tangents and secants are great together. Um, I might work with these for a bit. Eventually I've got a cosecant on the other side, but I might stick with these for the time being before I jump to sines and cosines. Um, but what I'm talking about here is match the target form. My target is a monomial. This is a binomial. I would like to combine these, add these together, and get a monomial. So my form, binomial, turn it into a monomial, I have to add those fractions together. So my least common denominator, as we worked on in 5.1, I need a factor of 1 plus secant theta. I need a factor of tangent theta which means this first term, which was already over 1 plus secant, needed to be multiplied by tangent on tangent. So this is tangent squared, plus this second term, which was already on tangent, needed to be multiplied by 1 plus secant on 1 plus secant. Okay, I'm going to get in some Pythagorean territory now with the tangents and secants. Again, I like tangents and secants initially because they live together in that Pythagorean. So let's see, numerator, tangent squared theta plus foiled 1 plus 2 secant of theta, which I'm not crazy about right now, plus secant squared theta all on 1 plus secant theta tangent theta, which I don't want to distribute because I'm hoping some of that cancels later. I've got no, de no denominator over here. Okay, now the numerator has tangent squared, secants, and secant squareds. And tangents and secants are good, but what would be even better would be to just have secants or just tangents. Well, I can turn secant squared into tangents, but I can't turn secant into tangents. I can turn tangents, though, tangent squareds into secants. Tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. So secant squared of theta minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 secant theta plus secant squared theta. It's a big mess. All on 1 plus secant theta tangent theta. Let's see what happens. I've got a secant squared plus a secant squared, two secant squared thetas. I've got a negative one plus one cancel, and I've got a plus two secant theta. And this should be screaming at us right here. You might want to factor me. Two secant theta times secant theta plus 1, and there's the big payoff, all on 1 plus secant theta tangent theta. I wonder if there's a shorter way to do this. All right, so the payoff was right here. We cancel, and now I need to turn that into 2 cosecant of theta, as we recall. And now I might be tempted to go sines and cosines. 
So this is 2 times secant is 1 on cosine of theta over tangent is sine of theta on cosine of theta is supposed to equal 1 on sine of theta. Again, I worked on the other side, but I didn't move things from the, this side over there. This would be 2, two on, excuse me. Okay, so this becomes, I'm going to run out of room here. I'm going to need to add on to this. I get 2 times 1 on cosine of theta times cosine of theta on sine of theta equals cosines cancel. Oh, I made it. 2 on sine of theta. These cancel. I get 2 on sine of theta equals 2 on sine of theta. Wow. A lot going on there. Um, you may want to go back and try to change things to sines and cosines in the first step, but I think you're going to see that it's going to still be quite a problem along the way. All right, let's take a look at one more. One of my favorite Greek letters here, alpha. I'm often going to refer to it as fish. Here we have cotangent of fish on cosecant, fish minus one. I got cotangents and cosecants, cotangents and cosecants. What do you think? You think we're going to go to sines and cosines? The reason we go to sines and cosines is that they live together in a Pythagorean and cotangent and cosecant already do. I've just got some ugliness here. I mean, we've got a little flipped over fraction here. I'd love to turn the denominator into cotangents and the numerator into cosecants. All right. We could go to sines and cosines. I'm not very confident we're going to get very far there because cosecants and, co and cotangents are just as good. So this is one of my absolute favorite strategies uh, is not using conjugates. One of my absolute favorite strategies is just matching a factor. For instance, this side has a factor of cosecant fish plus one in the numerator and a factor of cotangent fish in the bottom. So I could either multiply this side by cotangent on cotangent just to get a cotangent factor in the denominator. Or I might multiply this by cosecant fish plus one on cosecant fish plus one just to get a cosecant fish plus one in the numerator. So I'm gonna mo I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go cotangent fish on cosecant fish minus one times I'm gonna use conjugate cosecant fish plus one on cosecant fish plus one. Now I see a lot of students get conjugate crazy because we do it a couple times and they see this and they just automatically knee jerk conjugates. Here's my thinking. All right, I don't really know how I want to start this one. I'm desperate. Might I try a conjugate? Well, does it at least match a factor? Well, the conjugate of cosecant fish minus one is cosecant fish plus one, so it matches the factor in the numerator. Now, if you're thinking along with me, should I distribute this? No way. This right here is the only thing I like right now. Cotangent fish times cosecant fish plus one. That's my matched factor. But these, uh, there might be a payoff because nothing good's in the denominator here. I want this to turn into cotangents. So let's see, I foil the denominator, cosecant squared fish plus a cosecant minus a cosecant and minus one equals cosecant fish plus one on cotangent fish. Now let's think about this for a second. What do I like? This. This factor matches that. I wish I could cancel a cotangent. That's not a square, that's a fish. I wish I could cancel a cotangent, and I wish I still had a cotangent left in the denominator when I canceled this. I wish this was two cotangents. I wish this was cotangent to cancel, one cotangent to cancel that, and another cotangent to match that. Well, as you guys all know already, cosecant squared 
minus 1 is cotangent squared. Okay, cotangent fish times cosecant fish plus 1 on cotangent squared fish equals. Now, cancel one of these with this, and I get cosecant fish plus 1 on cotangent fish equals cosecant fish plus 1 on cotangent fish, and we got it. Now, things to warn against. Here's what I don't really want to see. The reader can look from here, especially if they see that that's a fish and not a two. Come on. The reader can look from here to here and say, well, what changed? Well, we reduced by cotangent here, and we reduced by cotangent in the numerator. Don't cross things out to cancel. If you're going to cancel, let's say I have something like cosine of theta times sine of theta minus 1, and then I get sine of theta minus 1 times tangent of theta. Let's say we have a situation like that, and I want to cancel. Just cancel with a simple line through so the, so the reader can still see it. Do not say, okay, those cancel. See, the reader has to have an idea what was behind there. Better yet, you don't even need to put the line in. Just go to cosine theta on tangent theta, as the case may be. Okay, we're going to get lots of practice on these. Um, you got 11 through 20, 48 through 59. Those are all. We're going we're gonna to practice every one of these types of problems we can, and I'm going to supplement that. We're going to spend a few days on this. Um, you know you got it down when it starts to just kind of feel like a puzzle and not like, not like math. But in the meantime, you have to be really strong on knowing our identities. You need to be really good on the quizzes that we're taking when we're listing reciprocal identities and when we're listing our quotient identities and our Pythagorean identities and our co-functions and our even odds. We need to be really strong at, at recognizing those. Okay, plenty of practice coming, and good luck.